Welcome to Louisville, Kentucky. We are in Freedom Hall, and this is the 2023 Men's Winter Cup. This is the individual event finals, the final day of competition here in this long weekend of competition here in Louisville. We have the senior women, the junior women, the Nastia Cup, and now the finals of the men's senior competition. I am John Roethlisberger. I'll be joined by Sam Peshepka. Right now, we're going to send you to the in-house PA announcer, Dan Maudi, as he introduced the athletes competing in tonight's competition. Louisville for their second and final session of competition, all vying to take home a gold medal in the individual apparatus finals. This final session arrives on the heels of the all-around competition and the first-time introduction of your 2023 Team USA for senior men. And now the gymnasts that are here to compete in the 2023 Men's Winter Cup. Starting off on parallel bars, for Evo Gymnastics, Drake Andrews. For Evo, Shane Wiskus. For Evo, for 5280 Gymnastics, Yul Moldauer. For Evo, David Shama. For Evo, Alex Diaz. For West Coast Olympic, Brandon Dang. And for Evo, Steven Nedarosic. In squad B, and starting off on pommel horse, for region nine, Gavin Zabrowski. From region four, Sasha Melanchthon. For region five, Sasha Boganosio. For region eight, Garrett Schooley. For region three, Mason Heath. For region eight, Jake Prabhakaran. And from region one, Colin Flores. In squad B, and earning a bye for this first round, from Region 1, Tyler Flores. From Region 1, Zach Green. From Region 1, Toma Murakawa. From Region 1, Nathan Roman. And from Region 1, Maxwell Auden. From Region 3, Caden Clinton. From Region 3, Kieran Mandava. And from Region 3, Chase Mundy. From Region 4, Solon Chioti. From Region 4, Gage Kyle. From Region 5, Carson Eshelman. From Region 5, Cooper Kim. And from Region 5, Kai Uemura. From Region 7, Hassan Adogdu. From Region 7, Adam Lakomi. From Region 8, Jake Prabhakaran. And Dylan Shepard. And from Region 9, Ty Jordan. Starting off on rings, for University of Oklahoma, Spencer Goodell. For Penn State University, Joshua Carnes. For Ohio State University, Cameron Nelson. For Penn State University, Michael Giroux. For University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Taylor Christopoulos. For Penn State University, Matt Cormier. And from University of Oklahoma, Ignacio Yuckers. Starting off on vault, all for Stanford University. Blake Soon. Coy Young. Riley Luce. Curran Phillips. Ian Gunther. And Jeremy Bishop.
Starting off on floor for University of Michigan, Landon Blix. For, U- for the United States Air Force Academy, Patrick Hoops. For University of Michigan, Rithik Fury. For Stanford boys, Evan Hymanson. For University of Michigan, Javier Alfonso. For University of Michigan, Cameron Bach. And for the United States Air Force Academy, Garrett Bronson. And starting off on high bar for University of Illinois, Connor McCool. For Roswell, Maxine Berezna. For University of California, Berkeley, Noah Neufeld. For University of Illinois, Mike Fletcher. For the United States Naval Academy, Isaiah Drake. And for University of Illinois, Ian Skirky. These are the senior and junior men competing in the 2023 Winter Cup. At this time, we invite you to please rise, remove your hats, and direct your attention to our nation's colors for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you. Jim, this may now prepare for competition in today's Winter Cup for senior and junior men.
Welcome to the 2023 Winter Cup. I am John Roethlisberger, also known as Leia Skywalker. That's my stage name. I am joined by Samantha Peshek, Olympic silver medalist, NCAA champion. Sam, great to be here. We have had an incredible week of gymnastics. We started with the senior men on Friday. We, then you went, you covered the Nasty and Lucan Cup Friday night. Had the senior women yesterday, junior women this morning, and here we are. The end of the marathon. We're very excited. This is a men's senior finals. It's going to be individual event champions crown. They'll also pick at least five more members of the U.S. men's national team. Talk about tonight. What are you excited to see? There's just, I mean, just the, the what's at stake here, I think, to me, is the big story of... There's a few different storylines. That's what makes this meet so interesting. We've got junior guys in this competition. We have senior guys that have already qualified for the national team. We have senior guys that are just doing a couple events. So we're excited to really walk you through what's going on here today. Brett McClure came over and just explained the entire competition and, and what's happening. So I'm excited to kick things off. We saw high level gymnastics from these senior athletes on the first day of competition. And although uh, a few of them are not gonna be in the all around or doing that many events tonight, we have a lot of great gymnastics to show you. And you mentioned Brett McClure, the high performance director for the men for USA Gymnastics. He came over and talked a little bit about what's happening tonight. So the top five in the all around from day one, those are the all around, all around winners. So Yul Moldauer won the all around title. They automatically qualify to the national team. They do not have to compete today in order to make that national team. They don't need individual event points, any of that. They are on the national team. So most of them have chosen not to compete today. And you mentioned what Brett had said about that, Sam. Kind of an interesting sidebar to those guys choosing not to compete, right? Yeah, you know, Brett said that they're hoping that the way they structured this competition that some of those top guys would utilize the comfort of knowing they're already on the national team to come in here and throw some upgrades just to see, A, how they score in competitions and gain some comfortability in this podium, uh, high-level competition setting. And instead, a lot of them are choosing to rest. And therefore, I think a lot of those coaches obviously train with them every day. Their strategy is a bit different in choosing rest over attempting some of those upgraded skills. What do you think about that, John? Well, it's, it's up to the individual coach and athlete. And, and Brett's hope was that they would do, they're really, really pushing difficulty and upgrades in the men's program. And he wanted to see them try it here in a big setting on the podium, get some experience with it. Not really the way it panned out. He's a little disappointed in that. But at the same time, you can't do the difficulty if you're not going to be healthy. And rest is a big part of that. So I really think you put it in the hands of the coaches and the athletes and they, you need to trust their decision. So um, so we won't see, you know, Yule, Asher, uh, Yule Moldauer, Asher Hong, Fred Richards, and Ian Lasik ellis will not be doing anything this evening. They were um, four of the five that qualified. Shane Wiskus is still jury's out. We saw him warming up. It looked like he may do some events. Not sure if he'll do all of them. We'll find out in a moment. But I, I got to say, I'm really disappointed that some of these guys, I, I loved watching them on the first day of competition. And so I'm disappointed, but I also understand a lot of these guys are mid-season. They're also competing in college. So they compete all the time. Hopefully they can get some experience throwing the difficulty at some other competition. So we are getting things going here on the floor exercise with Landon Blitz from Michigan. And he was 11th coming into today's competition in the all-around. So all-around is not the most critical part of today's competition. There is a point system in the men's program on each event. So they're really trying to push, rather than being kind of average across six events, they'd rather see you be great, have some events that jump up in the standings, big difficulty, big scores. So they have done a point system that gives the winner of each event 11 points. And then it goes down through the top 10. The top 10 athletes on each event get points. You add up those points across the board, and then the top five point getters after today's competition, outside of the five that made it in the all-around, I hope you're writing this down at home on your notepad, they automatically make the national team. So there'll be five automatic berths onto the national team after today's competition, in addition to the five all-arounders who already made it. Did you follow all that? Yeah, I was going to say, gotta, so to sum I it up. I heard your eyes rolling. I didn't see them. I heard them rolling. I'm a visual learner. I'm going need to a, need a spreadsheet for this. But what, what I'm, I'm hearing you say is, although some of these athletes have already qualified automatically to the national team, some of the athletes competing here today still have a chance. Yes, they absolutely do. And we're going to try to keep track of that for you throughout today's competition and let you know who's 
in the running for the point system. This is Riley Loose from Stanford. And give you an idea, he currently sits in the third position on points. He scored points on rings, vault, and high bar. And when I say he scored points, obviously he got a score, but he scored points based on his ranking on that event. He was top 10 on that event, therefore he got points. And this is one of those events Needs to do a big vault here again today. Get some more points. Put himself in position to make the national team. That's a big vault. Yeah. Uh, first day of competition, he had a 5-6 start value with an 8-5-5 execution score. And that's actually what the high performance directors are really looking for as a start value average. 5-6 is what they're looking for. And here's Coy Young. This is a replay of his vault. A beautiful vault. Incredible amplitude and difficulty as well. He led things off, got a 14.752. That was also a 5.6. Same vault that we saw from Riley Luce. Shane Wiskus over on the parallel bar. Shane finished in fifth all around at day one of the competition. Put up a 14.05 on parallel bars. This is one of his better events. Actually, an event he can score higher than that on this event. Has a 16-0 start value, so a fairly high start value we'll see. Maybe he'll upgrade a little bit, like Brett McClure was talking about. Add some difficulty to these routines. And this is really an event where he can get some of his execution score back. First day of competition, he had 8.05 in execution, and so just even gaining a couple of tenths, small things here and there, I think could really help him out overall. Landon Blix from University of Michigan on floor, scoring a 12.9, 55 start value with a 7.5 execution score. Beautiful skill right there, the Bob Zar, named after Rob's, Raj Bob Zar, the Ohio State Buckeye, Olympic bronze medalist. Oh, moving the handstand there, that is a two tenth deduction for each step. One tenth deduction, rather, for each step, two tenths total. Wow. Pretty darn good routine. Saw the movement of the hand in the handstand, the hop at the, at the end there on the dismount. But other than that, incredibly clean. This is Ian Gunther from Stanford. Sukahara-style vault. Now, John, he is using the sting mat right there. Is that standard for all these guys? Is that standard for this time of the competition season? It's common. I won't go as far as saying it's standard as we're watching another vaulter right now go without it. It's just personal preference, really, as we see Michael Fletcher on high bar. Big release move right there. Almost caught his face on the bar day one, he was telling me. Today it looks real good. There's a Coleman nicely done. He doesn't have all the difficulty in the world on this event, so it's really important that he can keep that execution as clean as possible. Michael only scored points on vault day one, so he, oh my goodness, and that was really oh. unfortunate because that was a high bar routine. It had some flaws, but did a lot of difficulty today and could have could have potentially been a top 10 high bar team until he landed that dismount. That's going to hurt. This was Jeremy Bischoff moments ago on vault. Sukahara style vault again. Double twist. So clean in the air. 13-5 for that vault. His teammate Ian Gunther got a 13-7. Just a 14-8 start. So a little over a point off in deductions. Great chest positioning too on the landing going to make for a great execution score. Of course, judges are looking for chest being high or vertical when the feet hit the ground. And similar to the women scoring, if you're new to men's gymnastics, a lot of similar execution deductions, knees together, pointed toes, and really tightening your body throughout every single movement is really important here. So we're over at the floor exercise. This is Evan Hymanson. He's from the Stanford Boys Club program. Kind of a nice deal to be in the Stanford club program and chain, train with some of the best in the world. Oh, out of bounds. Definitely one foot. That 
left foot looked like it may have still been on the line. That is a two-tenth difference. Both feet out is a three-tenth deduction. Oh, geez. One foot out is one-tenth. And on, on the first day of competition, he actually had three-tenths of out-of-bounds deductions. So hopefully it was just one foot out of bounds, and he can improve that by a couple of tenths here today. We'll, we'll see. We'll get the uh, judge's report here after he is done. John, what was your favorite event to start on? Rings. I like to start on rings. How come? It's an uh, it's easy, well, it's hard to fall off of rings. <laughs> You know, you, you're holding on to the rings, lots of strength. you got to land the dismount. And then you go to vault, and vault generally, you know, you land on your feet, although I've had <laughs> some that didn't. And then it gets you off to a good start, you know. Okay. you got to end on okay. pommel horse, which is uh, well, tough sometimes. Well, at least you're warmed up then. That's true. Although I did start on pommel horse, I don't know how many years in a row at championships, <laughs> and it worked out great for me every time. Josh Carnes from Penn State had a good day on day one of the competition. Finished seventh all around. Was actually flirting with that top five for much of the competition. Thought he was going to pull it off until the very end. I believe it was Pommel Horse he finished on. Dropped him out of that top five spot, but here he is on rings. And this event, he had a really good execution score on day one. A little bit low, his lowest scoring start value, lowest start value of all the events, 4.6, but in terms of execution, he really delivered there. And that's the game plan for him here, clearly. His, his coach, Randy Jepson, the head coach at Penn State, he's been around a long time, and he knows, look, you, you can't do the big strength moves, but what you do on the rings, let's make sure it's as clean as possible. Don't give the judges too much to deduct. And 8-5 is a very good execution nice. score. Nice finish. And always helps to stick that landing. This is Isaiah Drake from the Naval Academy, actually coached by my 1996 Olympic teammate, Kip Simons. Had a good day of competition day one. Only did five events, did not compete the floor exercise. Nursing some injuries that kept him off that event. Had some mistakes on day one on this event. See him struggling to get over the top there, want to keep the rhythm going. Well done. Ah, that's my favorite the, skill, John, I think. The I flying giant that doesn't fly enough. I want to <laughs> see that thing come off the bar a few feet. I want to learn that. You can teach that to me? Sure, no problem. Well done. Isaiah Drake, a high achiever at the Naval Academy. Yep. Tough, tough riggers there as a student athlete. but uh, Most likely going to improve that score, too, from the first day. Here we go quickly over to Pommel Horse. And this is Mason Heath. So... We have a group, unfortunately, fell off. We have a group of juniors on each event today. So one, one event, rather, in each rotation. So this rotation, it's Pommel Horse. There are seven juniors that competed in the Elite Team Championship last night. They are the top seven on that event, and they qualified to compete here with the seniors. So each rotation, one event, the next rotation will be rings, vault all the way through. We'll have a group of juniors. And this guy, we saw him in the lineup at the beginning, right, Sam? Oh, yeah. I was so excited to watch him and to compete with so, such older guys two days in a row. I mean, what a stud. Look at what we got going on here. This is great pommel horse. Nice swing once he got back up there. Unfortunate fall, but look, that pommel horse is almost as tall as he is. And we saw him in the lineup for the, the anthem, and he's standing there, and it was, you know, 5'8", five, 5'8", eight, five, eight, drops down to, to his height. Back up to 5'8", it was really cute. He had a little smile on his face when he got introduced. So. I mean, how cool would that be to be a younger guy, junior, getting invited to this competition? I mean, what an opportunity for him. I believe this is Javier Alfonso from Michigan. Working hard to get that landing, minimize the deductions there. Day two of competition is really settling into this equipment. They've already competed on it before. Yes, they might be a little bit more tired, but you know how the equipment works. So dialing in those details is what we can hope to expect from these guys here today.
Josh Carnes on rings. A 13.35 for his effort there. Simple pass on the sidelines, but if you're going to do simple, keep it very clean. He does six to landing. Tough dismount. Arabian double front, Sam. At the end, you're tired. You're trying to pull those legs. And the craziest thing about an Arabian double, it's a skill that I did, is it's a blind landing. So you're really hoping that you have enough air awareness at the end of your floor, team to know when to open up, when to spot the ground, and when to, how much to uh, bend and absorb the ground. Great work from him. Cameron Bach, the next gymnast to go, competed at Michigan, still up there as a volunteer coach, as well as training, hoping to give the Olympics one more run next year. Finished 10th in the all-around. Day one, we'll need to improve a bit on that because he is currently outside the top five in the points, which, again, just tuning in, all around today does not qualify you to the national team. You've got to have great individual events, even if it's just one or two that get you points, get those point totals into the top five, you'll automatically make the national team. On this event, Brett Winkler, High Performance Director, told us that he's hoping to see a 6-2 at least start value on this event. Of course, they are pulling those numbers from World Championships from last year, those event winners, in order to be competitive internationally. Cameron Bach is at a 5.4 now. So again, early in the season, they're working on that difficulty. Maybe a lot of these guys are currently training the difficulty, and it maybe just is not routine ready or has the stamina to be put in the routine yet. So that's a focus across all events here. Brett McClure has been very clear with us, John. Absolutely. He's been pushing that difficulty big time as we see Cameron Bach finish that triple twist. Well done from Cameron Bach. Here's Ian Gunther. Sukahara double twist. Nice stuck landing. And he got a he got a 13.7 on this vault, so pretty good score from him. 4.8 start, start value with an 8.9 execution there. You kind of wonder how they got 1.1, to be honest with you. He yeah. stuck the landing pretty clean in the area. You know, there wasn't without deductions. But Slight hike down at the end, but I agree with you. It was a bit underscored if, uh, you know, we're, we're jumping into the judges' shoes. The judges can't take less than a point. I think they're conditioned to start at a point off, but... One rotation in here and the 2023 Winter Cup. This is the men's finals. Five more events to go. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today.
Winter Cup. This is the final day of competition. We are one rotation in, and it's been a great event so far. Five spots up for grabs for the U.S. national team. All-around title was decided on Friday night. Yul Moldauer got that gold medal. Looks like we're going to get going on floor exercise first with Noah Neufeld from UC Berkeley. We're lying to you. We're not going to show him. We're going to jump over to Pommel Horse. Oh, we just and this is Patrick Hoops. Now, this is a big deal here, this Pommel Horse routine, because we mentioned how you can make the U.S. national team. There's another way. If you win an event, win a single event, but you have a start value that is amongst the top three in the world from the most recent world championships. Again, I hope you're, you got that legal pad out and you're writing all this down, which means Patrick Hoops right here, if he can win Pommel Horse with a start value of a 6.3 or better. And he has a 6.4, John. And he has a 6.4 from day one. He will earn an automatic spot. And right now he's sitting in second place behind Steven Nedorosic and oh, the uh, scores are just so close. Steven is at a 15.092, and Patrick, after day one, is got has a 14.992. So less than like 0.01 is yeah, the Yeah, this this pommel horse competition here at this Winter Cup has been unbelievable. It's almost like a World Championship final by itself. And this routine, fantastic so far. We saw a form break early. Oh, and he hits his leg on the tongue face. Oh, he's got to be getting tired. He's got to be getting tired. Does he? Oh, oh he doesn't have no. enough. Doesn't have enough. You called it. You could see him kind of slow to, you know, I've never done Pommel Horse, but I feel like I've watched it enough and, and kind of analyzed these guys. First of all, the, the amount of strength you have to have during these routines and endurance is incredible, but I could really see him. Once you uh, have one little mistake, a break in rhythm, it's really tough. How tough is it to get that rhythm back? Well, when you're, especially when you're tired, you know, when you're tired, you want it to just flow and be as easy as possible. And he had to fight so bad to save it on the other end. And I've been there. Once you fight, you expend tons of energy. And unfortunately, the automatic spot for Patrick Hoops is not going to happen here yeah. at this Winter Cup. Not with this field yet to come. You mentioned that Rossick, Ian Skirky, Ignacio Yonkers. It's, uh, They're all it's right there gauntlet. trying to uh, get that spot, John. I'm excited to watch how that plays out. Shane Wiskus on high bar. And Shane missed this event. Day one of competition. Yeah, only scored a 12.2, so this is definitely an area of improvement that he can make here. And this is a good event for him. This is the event that he jumps up on the radar when you're picking a world team or an Olympic team. He is good on this event. And this is an event, Team USA, they've got a little bit of work to do to catch up to the rest of the world. So a big, big routine for Shane Wiskus, looking very good today. Yeah, sometimes you make a mistake on day one and you are just itching to get the opportunity to redeem yourself day two. And he does it. And that was really about as good as Shane Wiskus can do it. Well done. You saw that score they already had in place there. That was his score from day one. They'll add today's score. But this routine right here, we talk about an automatic spot. Curran Phillips on parallel bars. He is world class. He is currently the top point getter out of the competition after you take out the top five all-arounders and watch this routine unbelievable level of difficulty 6.8 start value day one he's in first place scoring a 15.997 oh my gosh if he can hit the same routine he did day one he will be a national team member Little lot lack of rhythm there, but pretty darn good. I'm, I'm nitpicking. I can maybe take a tenth. The upper arm work, when he puts his upper arms on the rails, is so difficult, and he does it so easily. Two tenths on the walking right there. Double pike, a little easier dismount for him. And that is Curran Phillips, not Connor McCool, just so you know. And that should do it, Sam. 
I don't see anybody beating his two-day total on parallel bars, and he does have the start Parallels. value of a 6.6 .6 or higher. We might have just seen our first new national team member from this competition just in the second rotation. Well done. This is Connor McCool from the University of Illinois getting ready to go on floor exercise. Great tumbler. Finished ninth on floor exercise day one. Had a 15.9 start value. So doesn't meet that requirement for minimum start value. So not going to most likely be a scenario where he jumps up onto the national team as an individual, but putting himself on the radar as someone who can really contend on this event. Yeah, he, he doesn't quite have the start value yet, but again, we bring this up in the female competitions as well. It's still early in the elite season, and you can add more difficulty as it gets closer to championships, closer to world championships. I mean, placing fourth on floor at this uh, Winter Cup, John, is, is nothing to hold your hat on. No, not, not at all. And here's the, the other thing to keep in mind. Connor is 11th in total points. So I mentioned the idea of winning an event and having the required start value being an automatic spot. He's 11th in total points, and he needs to be in the top five. So not completely out of the question. He's going to have to improve a lot here. He's going to have to get into the probably top two or three on this event and the vault, which he's going to do later. Man, they're really icing him out here. Jeez, let him go. Tell you what, man. I thought the judges had a practice day one, too. They are slow. What a painful thing as a gymnast. I've been there <laughs> where I've had to wait. And it's what what did you say in your head when you had to wait for the judges? I, I, I cursed. No. <laughs> I tried to just stay in my little bubble. Two and a half twisting double back. Unfortunately, that is a three-tenth step plus a tenth for stepping over the line. There he goes. Got it back now. You can see his head coach there in the white sweatshirt in the background, Daniel Ribeiro from Illinois. Took over the head coaching job after Justin Spring moved on from the head coaching position at Illinois to be the assistant coach for the Alabama women's gymnastics team. Yeah, you and I get to see him quite often in our current roles with NCAA. Yep. But you know he checks up on these Illinois guys. He uh, is a gymnastics fan uh, near and dear to his heart. That was a three and a half twist oh. of basically a nailed landing. He's going to finish with a triple twist right here. One, two, three. And I got to give you a stuck wow. landing. Feet were a little far apart, but I'll tell you Dang. what. If it wasn't for that step out of bounds on the first pass, that would be an extremely tough floor routine to beat today. Now Josh Carnes fighting for a national team wow. spot. It was like his feet just floated to that stick position. Incredible. He was um, flipping so high, spinning so fast and nailed it. That's big. Josh Carnes really has just been methodical <laughs> through this competition. Hit after hit other than that like pommel horse doing. routine. Now Cameron Bach it's his chance on Pommel Horse. Watch this right here. It's called the Busanari flip. Oh! And that is a heartbreaker for Cameron Bach, who's currently in 13th place on this event after day one. You know, it was definitely an area that he was hoping to kind of add some points in in today's competition. Yeah, absolutely an event that he could score points, finish in the top 10. Got a swing going now. What a way to get back up and finish, though. Disappointed from that fall early on in the routine. But again, it's all about that mental toughness. He wants to take a deep breath, kind of forget about it, move on to the next event. Kern Phillips on parallel bars, a 16.097. Wow. The highest score of this competition on any event. He is on the national team. This is Ian Gunther moments ago. You know I'm a big fan of Ian Gunther's routine, Sam. 
How come? He's got an incredible dismount. <laughs> I wonder who first invented that dismount. Let's just say it's called the Roethlisberger, but the funny part is, is I didn't actually invent it. I stole it from someone else and then competed it at the Olympic Games, and it got named after me. Is that true? There it is right there. Wendy Bell. Oh! Wow. Be honest. Who did it better? Oh, Ian, you or Ian, Ian Gunther? Ian Gunther, 100%. <laughs> Better, you know, he was over on the vault chairs earlier during warm-ups, and I walked by, and he saw me, and I saw him, and I just looked at him because he missed it day one. He yeah. over rotated it, and I looked at him, and I just shook his shook my head at him, and he goes, "I know, I'm sorry," and I go, "It's such a shame," <laughs> and he goes, "Don't worry, I'm gonna na nail it today." Wow, he delivered. How does that make you feel? It like, makes it he really, must really good. Look up to you. That I, is. Really I don't special. know if he does or not. I look up to him more than he looks up to me after that. Amazing performance. 14.2 is what he got for that routine. Shane Wiskus on high bar, a 13.772. Big improvement there for him. Patrick Hoops on pommel horse, unfortunately, with that fall, a 12.595. Connor McCool on floor exercise, a 13.853. Josh Carnes for that stuck two and a half twist, a 14.0. Josh Carnes. You're going to have to put that young man on the national team, it feels like, to, to this yeah, weekend. Yeah, he's in it to win it. I mean, what a great weekend he's having. Blake Soon, this is an important routine for him as well. Scored points on this event day one, finishing high in the standings on pair of bars. Currently sits in fourth place in the point standings for those guys competing today. in seventh place after day one. Excuse me, third place after day one on this event, 15.044. Six four stock value. I mean, that's a pretty, still a pretty high start value. Big front one in the quarter. That's why they have the pads on the arms for skills like that. Huge double pike. Wow, look at everybody. Pumped up for him. Stanford is having a great day on B bars today. When Stanford has a training session, it's like a national team <laughs> inner squad. I mean, they have so many members of the national team in that gym, and Blake soon trying to make sure that he is one of them going forward after this competition. Now, Landon Blix from Michigan on Pommel Horse. Good work on one pommel right there. You like see those hips stay extended. Little form break there, a little choppy in the rhythm of the circle too. These horse routines have gotten so long now, trying to get all the difficulty crammed in. Does he have enough juice at the end? He does. Well done. How do you think that's gonna compare? I think it's going to be a good score. You know, it's not going to be up there with the pommel horse specialist like Annette Rossick, but amongst the guys that do all around, I suspect that'll be one of the, the higher scores. All right. Landon might, Blix. Might even get him some points on that event. We'll see. We got one more routine for you here on rings. Ty Jordan from Region 9. He's one of the junior competitors from day one. Looking to get experience here, competing with the seniors. 17 year, years old from Morrison, Colorado. Finished third on the still rings in the junior division at the 2022 U.S. National Gymnastics Championships. How much would I have to pay you to do a rings routine right now? Oh, there isn't enough money <laughs> in the world. You could pay me all you wanted and I couldn't do one. <laughs> Just nice start, nice strength positions. We saw Sasha Artemev and his coach lifting him up to the apparatus. Sasha, a member of the 08 men's Olympic team that won a bronze medal. You know those guys pretty well. Oh, yeah. You know that Olympics pretty well. I do. I do know that Olympics. Sam won a silver medal with the women's team. Yeah, it's good to Beijing. see so many uh, 
2008 kids here. I say kids because we're very young, Don. Absolutely. Both women Always and the kids. men. <laughs> Fighting a little bit in that handstand. Little low on that full twisting double back. His shoulders coming that. down, but absolutely fought. And a young kid to do that type of strength on rings. That is not something you see all that often. So well done through two rotations. Exciting parallel bar routine from Curran Phillips. We'll be the first to congratulate you on your spot on the national team. More to come. Exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health with a skilled team of dedicated specialists along with advanced services and procedures. It's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic. Kentucky, we've had two rotations underway. That means there's four more rotations to go. We have an interesting competition here. Some guys are doing the all around. Some of these athletes are just doing one event, two events, but what's most important is they all have something to prove here. Either they're trying to make a spot on the national team, they're trying to earn points, they're trying to gain competition experience with upgrades. We got a lot going on, John. What are you excited about after first the first two rotations? Well, you know, Shane Wiskus looks great. He's uh, hit a couple of routines. He is not that uh, the all-around has any ramifications today as so much, but he is the highest all-arounder. 
Riley Lewis, Ian Gunther, both from Stanford, Josh Carnes, who we've really been impressed with, not just today, but both days of competition up there as well. So Brett McClure confirmed what we had said in the last rotation. Kern Phillips did solidify his spot on the national team. So Incredible. from this meet, after the five all-arounders made the national team Friday, they took the top five all-around scores. Those guys are on the national team. Kern Phillips is the sixth automatic spot onto that national team. There is a seventh, Brody Malone. If you know anything about men's gymnastics, you know the name Brody Malone. He is automatically on the national team as well because of his, by virtue of, I like to say that, it makes me sound smarter. You, you by, are smart, John. Don't by worry. virtue of his world title that he won most recently in Liverpool on the horizontal bar. We're going to do, those are high, these are highlights, Sam. That's why it says highlights, upper right. Great. Highlights. That is Coy Young. Boom! In that front two and a half twist. I want to go back to Corinne Phillips. Okay? He's go back. the only person out of this competition today that's a lock that we can talk about. And I'm comparing his scores from the international scores from World Championships. Now, the person that won Worlds on P-Bars had a 6.9 start value. Yep. Corinne has a 6.8 start value, which Let's just assume the execution is the is identical. That means he's sitting in second place with the second highest start value internationally. That is huge for Team USA. Brett McClure told us they're making a big push for individual event winners, and this is huge for setting the tone in that direction. I mean, what do you make of that, John? No, that is that's absolutely critical. And but we need guys like that, like Current, and Current's great on high bar too, and he'll be coming up here. And he's got an injured back, so he can't do the all-around. Actually, can't do all his skills on high bar as well. But you need guys that jump up like that on an individual event, but also are on the radar and at least really a couple other events. Now, I will say Netarasik went to World Championships as a member of the team and did just pommel horse. But the best teams in the world, you know, they have guys that can go up and win an event, but also they can put up in a three-up, three-count at a Worlds on two or three or more other events. Yeah, and, you know, Curran is not just a specialist on P-bars. He also is sitting in second place on high bar. And you're mentioning that he can't even do all of his difficulty. So I think he's in a really good place because in order to be productive as a good teammate for Team USA, um, he's going to have to produce on, on more than one event. And it looks like he's showing that he can just after day one. Here he is getting ready to go on the horizontal bar as well. You mentioned... The guy who won parallel bars at the World Championships had just one-tenth higher start value. His name is Zhou Jing Yuan from China. Let me just say, this guy does the greatest single routine, maybe in all of gymnastics, male or female. His parallel bar routine is absolutely from another planet. So I mean, I, as good as Curran is, I, that guy's going to be tough to beat. Here's Curran on high bar. I don't know. My money's on Curran. Got a big release right out of the gate. The Casina full twisting double back over the bar. With the late catch there. Beautifully done, though. I mean, his back looks pretty healthy to me, man. Holy yeah. cow. He is swinging so nice here. The skills he can't do are the skills that he pikes his feet through his hands, so those deep compression skills, very nicely done. Like to see a double twist and double layout maybe for a dismount if he really wants to go big, but that small hop on the landing, or step on the landing at the end, really the most obvious deduction of very few in that routine. That is the end of the night for Curran Phillips. So we jump over to floor exercise, Alex Diab, who's also trying to get one of those individual spots on vault, unfortunately did not go well for him there day one, but a very good tumbler as well. Yeah, and he had a three-tenths out-of-bounds deduction on floor, so really working on staying in bounds, controlling those landings here today, and we'll definitely see an improvement in his score after day one. Currently sitting in 15th place on this event after the first day, but again, can definitely improve here. And definitely, look at this Maltese on the floor exercise. Usually see it on the rings, but that is pretty cool. And Alex, really a guy that I would expect to be certainly be a top 10 gymnast on floor, which means he would be getting points. He'd register on that point system. Again, you got to be in the top 10 on an individual event 
to get points, and I know he would agree with me on that one. He's doing a really good job, like I said, controlling those landings. You can tell he really took the score into consideration, figuring out the punch here. I mean, two oh, little steps the there, flag. man, jinxed him just a little bit. But again, we're seeing that sting mat here where I don't even know if he landed on it for that last pass. Quickly over to Vault. Very nice double twist from Tyler Flores, one of the juniors competing here at this competition. The junior group now moves over to the vault. We saw them begin on the pommel horse. They've rotated through rings and now on vault. Ian Gunther from Stanford, the next gymnast to go. Kern Phillips, a 13.65 for that high routine. Shows you how tough it is to score big on the horizontal bar. Did a great routine, just gets into the mid 13s. You mentioned 13.6. That's exactly what Ian Gunther scored on the first day of competition here. But he has higher execution, lower difficulty, so that's what we can expect, I think, from him here on day two of competition. Very nice sequence right there. We call that a jam to the eagle grip, and then he does an endo giant in the L grip position. Well done. A little bit of bent knees on that dismount. But did it about as good as he can do, and that's all you can expect. All you can hope for. Shane Wiskus, this his third event. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm just gonna do a running casual pike double front and stick it for you. I feel like the guys are really crushing it with the landings here today. In the women's competition, we saw so many out of bounds both today and the first day of competition. And I think the, the men have really settled in here. It's going to show up in their scores. Yeah, Shane is a gymnast that really is, he's a sticker, if that is a word. Him and Yule, I think, are really set the standard on this event for clean landings. Wow, nice two and a half twist. Punch front full. Nails the finish. I used to do that pass, and it is tough. Well done. Finishing triple twist. Shane, the only gymnast who finished in the top five to be competing here today. Now, this is a big moment as well. We talked about the pommel horse competition here at this meet and Ian Skirky is somebody who is in the hunt for that automatic spot. Kern Phillips got one on P-Bars. There's still one up for grabs here on Pommel Horse. He was sitting in third place after the first day but by less than a tenth so he's, ab he's absolutely capable of overtaking those. Doesn't Has one tenth higher of start value so he just needs to be really clean here and he might have it. Ian Skirky actually comes from the same club gym as Steven Netarosic. <laughs> Daniel Ribeiro told me Steven, he didn't have a spot for Steven on the team and when he was coming out of high school and regrets it, he said, I'm not missing out on another one from that gym. <laughs> Look at and that. he got it. I think he thinks he, he got that spot. It, there's screaming coming from the stands, and I'll tell you what, I met his parents in the lobby of the hotel, both of them the other day. You and I met his yep, dad, yep. and I got to think, I'm, I'm hoping that's mom. That would be me if I was the parent. Uh, wow. Unbelievable, too. What a great twist. fault. That was huge. Gage Kyle, just a junior. Let's check that out one more time. Oh, my gosh, look how hot he gets off the table. That's sick. He could do another... An entire twist more, a three and a half off of that. It was too easy for him. I'll tell you what, I did a double twist at the peak of my vaulting career, a souk double, double twist, twist, a souk double twist. And it was like, I had to pray to God every time <laughs> I went. I'm like, please God, let me land this on my feet today. And that guy just, 
He's probably over rotated the two and a half. Old, but just, oh man. man, humbling moment. <laughs> see another one of these juniors competing here in the senior competition chase mondi now all right we, we got to talk about ian skirky's score oh my gosh 15.972 there's another two and a half and oh almost another stuck this mount that is that is big time sam uh, wow this is going to be a fun one steven netarosic i believe is you know look what at the next rotation he was First after day one, Steven Netarosic was, got a 15.092, and Ian Skirky just knocked that score out of the park. Ho -ho. Yeah, this is going to be a, it's going to be a fun one. And, you know, Steven, he knows it, too. He saw, he's got to have seen that score come up. I don't know if uh, Steven can, can uh, handle the heat on that one. His start value, I think he needs to add one more tenth. Should you go tell him to add one more tenth well, before his routine? You know, it was, we see Riley loose here on high bar. Steven told me before the competition, he walked by the table, and we asked him day one. He said he was going to do a 6-6. Six, six. He only did a 6-4. That's right. So he is capable of more difficulty. He better go big today so he can rival his old teammate. Wow, that's going to be fun. That is going to happen next rotation. Don't go away. Don't leave. Don't leave your couch. Call your neighbors. Get the kids in from outside. Riley loose with the double double dismount. Riley in second place all around after two events today. And again, trying to trying to maintain his points position. He's the third highest point getter after day one. Garrett Schooley here on vault. Got to know Garrett Schooley quite well. He's spent a number of weeks at my summer camp. Like that plug? I, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I've been there too. It's incredible. Josh Carnes now getting ready to go on the parallel bars. Josh Carnes, fourth highest all-arounder in today's competition. You know, I've been really impressed by him watching him this week. Really clean execution. And he, he's an athlete that seems to not really give anything away fights for all those details and I think those are the ones that are going to end up on top. Currently sitting in seventh place on this event after day one. 6-0 start value. So pretty high difficulty here. Nice so far. Makuts to Healy sequence right there. <clears throat> Alex Diab a 13-5 on floor. Shane Wiskus a 14-05 on floor. Beautiful. <laughs> Ian Gunther on high bar, 13-2. We saw Kern Phillips, 13-6-5 as well. Double front, well done. You think his hair gets in, in his eyesight? At no, all? it's perfect. He's, I it's love perfect. the flow, I love it. Adds to the aesthetics. Nice done. Just just methodical and chipping away at it. Landon Blick up here next on rings. Landon, the fifth highest all-arounder in today's competition. Again, all-around competition has been decided, but of the athletes still competing today, that is where he stands, just for some perspective. Landon, this is his lowest scoring, lowest start value of all of his events. So really needs to focus on the execution here. Double twisting, double back, small hop, but overall well done. So let's go back in time here. Let's just look at this pommel horse routine one more time. Tell me what makes it so difficult, John. Well, first of all, it's really long. But the one pommel work like that, and watch this right here, 360 degree turn on one hand. Netarosic does that as well. Now he does it the opposite direction oh. on the other hand. 
Had a small form break there, probably a tenth. Maybe a tenth in rhythm. Pretty darn smooth through there. Hard to take deductions, to be honest with you. I mean, his legs are glued, ankles are glued. If I'm, if I'm nitpicking and I'm him and I'm trying to improve for the future, point the toes a little harder. And, I mean, a 16-5 start. He had a point off in deductions. But he also got bonus. So there is a bonus system in place, too, because of his start value. And that's how he got up to that 15.972. Because he did have a point off, which puts him at a 15.5. But a bonus system. We're not going to get into the bonus system because you guys are going to be confused enough. But there is a bonus point because of that start value that bumps him up to that 15.972. Nederosik will be in the hunt for that bonus as well. So that's coming up, people. Get out the popcorn. Fourth rotation of the Winter Cup. It's going to be a good one. Sam's excited. We're going to eat our M&Ms on the break. gymnastics event, focusing on skills, drills, and body movement for the balance beam. The goal of Beam Queen Boot Camp is to empower gymnasts to be confident on beam by strengthening their mental and physical techniques. We'd be honored to have you part of this amazing Beam Queen community too. Check out our website for upcoming events and get on our email list so you will always know what we have coming up. See you at our next beam party. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic.
Welcome back inside Freedom Hall. It's the last and final competition of the weekend. We have had so much good gymnastics. It's kind of sad that it's wrapping up. We've been in the arena a ton and we have watched high level gymnastics here. And I, I gotta be honest, John, this last rotation really fired me up. Ian Skirky's uh, 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 pommel horse routine. Man, that was exciting. Yeah, you know what I was just thinking about? We we're talking about his finish where he stood, arms out, kind of just yeah. face forward, pause, muscle. I loved it. Followed. We're going to call that the skirk from the now skirt. on. I'm the finish just... pose. Not the skirky. It's just going to be the, the skirk. Skirk. It was very intimidating and very <laughs> impressive. Isaiah Drake. Yeah, I wonder here. if uh, Steven Nedarosik thinks it's uh, intimidating. We'll find out. We're about to find out in about three routines here. I hope the popcorn is hot at home. Hope you got a cold beverage to sit and watch an epic moment here at this Winter Cup in a few moments. Here's Isaiah Drake, back up rise Maltese, very nicely done. Nazarian roll to Iron Cross. I talked to Kip Simons last summer about Isaiah heading into summer competitions and and I got them on the phone. They were in the gym, and I was talking to Kip, and you could hear the vault board going in the background, and Isaiah was working out, I think, by himself at the moment. And it just reminded me of how lonely an elite gymnastics career can be. It's you and maybe one or two other gymnasts, or maybe just you and your coach and a couple coaches, and it's, it's hours and hours of training and repetition. And uh, the weird part is I heard that, and I missed it. <laughs> I wish I could be in the gym working out with them. But this is a great routine. Great finish, full twist and double back. Yeah, I've, I've trained by myself at the elite level and then with a the team, and man, it is so much easier when you have teammates right there looking quickly at Jeremy Bischoff here on floor. Beautiful double twist and double back. Seventh in the all round after the last rotation. Nice landing. Gosh, that's so... So many guys do that now, and I tell you what, it wasn't that long ago that somebody would have said that's impossible as a human being to do. Isn't it interesting that the sport of gymnastics, both on the men's and the women's side, the, the level of difficulty has just evolved so significantly. I mean, I'm so impressed watching these guys and also on the women's side as well. Two and a half twist, punch front layout. That's almost a compulsory pass now for some of the men. You know someone's watching at home and, and gonna try that, right? Just make sure you got mats padded around. It's not- <laughs> Do uh, not try this at home. Yeah, <laughs> they're about to try it at home, but please don't. Well, I'm saying they make it look so easy. So I wanna point out just how difficult it is and don't try that at home. Maybe uh, start with some push-ups first. So there we go. And there is the lonely, ominous pommel horse. The moment we've all been waiting for. There is the 2021 world champion on the pommel horse. Finalist at the last world championships. Trying now to chase down Ian Skirky for an automatic berth onto the U.S. national team. He's got to score, essentially has to score a 16. Looked a little off, but no form break. Wow. There, yeah, there's the Sone, the 360 care. Now the 360 oh Stockley goodness. crossed his feet ever so slightly on that second one. Oh, and what? Oh, oh. my goodness. And that is going to take the drama. What's going on? He's asking the judge if he should do that, repeat that skill if he got credit for it. But it's not going to matter. That is a one-point deduction for the fall. And, you know, it looked like right at the beginning, he had a couple of very slight adjustments. Like he was off, but he is savvy enough to, to keep it moving and keep it moving cleanly, but just didn't seem sharp throughout that routine. Had little adjustments, and then that last one pommel sequence. Where do you think Ian Skirky's watching this from? You know, they're good friends, and uh, <laughs> they used to go to the same gymnastic club, so I don't think he's... I don't think he's gloating, it's, certainly not. It's a healthy not. competition, but, you know, I'm sure he wanted him to do his best so he could beat him when Steven Nedarosik was had a hit routine, too. I mean, 
gosh, all of us are, are such good friends with, we know just how tough these routines can be. Yep. You know what's, you know what's interesting about this is Stephen Netarosic made Ian Skirky and others realize it was possible. Yep. It was possible to be on a national team. It's possible to go to World Cup events overseas as a specialist. It's possible to be a world championship team member, an Olympian like Alec Yoder was back in the past last Olympic Games, and then to be a world champion. So Ian Skirky knows that too and probably owes a little bit to Stephen Netarosic. And ironically, yeah. now Stephen Netarosic is going to have to take a, a step back for a moment at least and let Ian Skirky take his shot as we see Riley loose on floor exercise. Yeah, we talk about that iron sharpen, sharpens iron, and I actually think that that's really healthy for the men's program here. I think it's maybe something that had been lacking on individual events because it seems like, from what Brett McClure has been saying, that the focus has been on the all-around for so many years that really spending time on the individual events and being an expert on maybe one or two, like we've been talking about throughout, is really going to benefit Team USA internationally. Yeah, I remember some of the the last Soviet teams, like the unified team we competed against in 1992. I mean, six guys on their, their competing team, and you look over there and go, all six of those guys would be the U.S. national champion. <laughs> you know, and talk about iron sharpening iron, and imagine yep. being at that gym, and we're not even talking about the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth guy that could help them win gold medals. It's, it's true that uh, the more everyone gets better, yeah, it helps I mean, the team. We're seeing it right here with that Stanford team. You know, all those guys push each other, and it's really benefiting them individually, especially at these elite competitions, too. Rising tides raises all boats. Is that yep, another cliche? That is a use? great cliche for what's happening right now. Josh Carnes on high bar. Steven Netarosic, a 14 9 1 6 for his pommel horse routine. Not going to be enough, obviously, there. Coleman, slight form break on the catch, but otherwise very nicely done. Laid out to Kachev. Great body position. A lot of times the guys will pike a little bit on that. Not so much for Josh. Just another one, just another day at the office for Josh. Another hit routine. He looks like he just means business. You know, he lands those, it was a really good routine, doesn't even crack a smile. You know, he is focused. So I believe we have a couple more yet to go on high bar Shane Wiskus over there, loosening up the shoulders on Pommel Horse. So we just have parallel bars actually. A few more on parallel bars, and this should be our last gymnast on the pommel horse rotation. Yule Moldauer not competing. We actually put out the bat signal for Yule to come join us in the booth. We asked for his number before the the meet, Sam. And he goes to John, and now John's a little uh, and I, well, bitter. I, I text. Well, I know I texted him, and, and I'm, now I'm thinking it was like high school when I asked for a girl's number. They just give me the wrong number. Shane Whiskus. an important routine for Shane to do even though he's already on the national team not going to make a difference oh unfortunate fall but I was going to say a good routine for him to do again in a big setting up on the podium in competition for a practice you know whether he puts in more difficulty or just gets more experience competing and actually Brett McClure texted me not too long ago and said I, I would have loved to at least seen all the guys do pommel horse in this event that's weak for Team USA the more times they can compete it the more time they can add difficulty, do it in front of a crowd, in front of a judge, the better. Ah, oh, there we go. A little break at the end, but not bad. Come on, Shane. Oh. You could tell his what his thoughts might be in that right as he started dipping those hips. 
see it going sideways just a bit. Here's the here's what pommel horse is to a guy like Shane. So he's not going to be up there with a Steven Nederosik or even a Yule Moldauer, you know, in the top five on this event. But what he needs to do is he can be there on high bar and he can be there on floor and he can be there on parallel bars. But what he needs to do here is he needs to show Brett McClure and the, the selection committee, hey, I could be the, the first guy to go on pommel horse and, and help this team in a leadoff spot at the very least. And that's going to actually help him get on a, an Olympic team or a world team. But that one going to be disappointed there. Disappointing. All right, guys. We're happy, but mostly John is happy because Yul Moldauer is joining us right now. He's throwing on a headset, but while we're waiting for him, let's check out P-Bars here. Come on in here, Yul. This That's is a okay. casual environment. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I just said to Sam earlier, I go, I wonder if Yule did the same thing girls used to do to me in high school. And they, I'd ask for their numbers, and they'd give me the wrong number. <laughs> Be honest. Were you ghosting, John? No, not at all. Yeah, I, it's all right. I thought he told me. Not the first time. No. Well, welcome. You know, you, didn't, uh, you did a great job on Friday night, by the way, as we're just finish, finishing, up, uh, finishing yeah. up this rotation. But... Uh, Outstanding job. Talk about your competition Friday. You look, I told you, you look like you had a little chip on your shoulder, like you're a little angry. Yeah. Um, no, it was super fun. Um, you know, Friday I kind of took the mindset of uh, making it feel like a qualification day. And I, I know Winter Cup is one of those events. It's early in the season. And I just wanted to come out here and prove that I was ready, no matter if it was early in the season, no matter if it was day one. You know, my goal wasn't to win. It was just, you know, come out and hit, you know, my routines. And honestly, I hit them, but I think I could have done a little better on some of them. But, uh, you know, it, it honestly surprised me that I won. So, um, very, you know, I can't complain. I was super excited. But, again, it was it was nice to just see everyone else here. You know, the gymnastics has grown so much. Guys are doing uh, bigger upgrades. So, and I mean, look at these juniors. You know, I'm yeah, watching Yeah, this is them. Nathan Roman, by yeah. the way, finishing up the junior rotation yeah. on Parallel Bars. I'm just watching these kids, and I'm like, wow, I better, I better go back into the gym. <laughs> well, I want to know, you know, a first elite competition here in the, U the U.S. for all of these guys. What's one thing that you're really proud of yourself and one thing that you're hoping to improve next time? Uh, proud of myself for just coming out here and hitting six for six, you know. Yeah. That's always a good feeling. Um, but Building the, that consistency. Yeah. Uh, and the next competition, you know, uh, just stick more dismounts, point my toes a little more, straighten my legs here and there and some skills, but um, throw in some upgrades. But, yeah, that's next. You just got to keep building off of it, but you got to learn, like, this was this meet, and it's, you know, on to the next. You can't. Yeah. This is Caden Clinton yeah. on Peril of Ours out of Region 3. So what upgrades can we uh, what upgrades can we look forward to seeing from you? Uh, I'm gonna be doing a double double laid out on floor. What? Uh, yeah, I've been doing it. Those a lot tiny of little legs of yours. You can do. <laughs> yeah. Really, that's amazing. Yeah, so nice. that will help. Um, Have um, you done it on hard ground yet? Yeah, I actually was doing a lot when I was over in the French Queen to sleep. Okay. Um, and then Palmoris just gotta put the E dismount in, the E flop. I did a D flop on Friday. Um, high bar casino. So I've been doing casinos a lot. Yeah. So yeah, your Coleman, your Coleman look good. Thank you, thank you. No, We're so. on camera. There we are. Wow, that's you look you look good. I don't right I don't look that <laughs> good actually. Um, so where would that get you start value wise on on floor and and pommel? So floor it it raised it up to a five nine. Okay. And it's nice because if I just change that pass, I can keep all the other passes for my landings. Okay. So that will help. Um, pommel six two. Nice. Uh, high bar 6-0. Oh, that'd be great. And yesterday on P-Bars, I did a 6-5, but I can do a 6-7. Wow. So, what do you think of that current Phillips pair of bar team, by the oh, way? He's amazing. You know, I, I'm jealous of how easily he does the front rest skills. And I am too. I'm actually not jealous. I'm bitter. <laughs> I, I worked on those for years, but I digress. No, it, it's, it's so fun to watch him on P-Bars. He's got you know, such a nice swing and elegance to his style of routine, so it's yeah. always nice to see him go out there and hit. You're, you're hitting back today. Um, watching the competition, who's impressing you out there? Honestly, everybody is. Um, you know, Penn State, you know, they, I was saying this before the year even started, I think Penn State has a good college team, and 
you know, look at the guys out here. They're doing well. You know, the younger juniors are coming out and killing it. You know, we had a junior do a triple four in the vault. And so, I mean, I think it's just everyone in this building. You can tell there's an urge to build our team up and, and get on the podium here pretty soon. Solon Chiodi will be the last junior to go here on Peril of Ours. What can we expect from Team USA? You know, I, I lived through an era where we, we, we owned fifth place. You know, we fought and we scratched and we wanted it bad. We couldn't quite get there. Then the next four years, they were on the podium. 08, they got the bronze medal up there. It's been kind of hit or miss a little bit. It was a heartbreaker in Liverpool, mm -hmm. you know, last year. But everyone keeps waiting and expecting great things. And, and there's great gymnastics. But what can we look forward to in, in 2023 and 2024? Can this team be good enough to get on that podium? Oh, yeah, we're, we're definitely good enough to be on the podium. I think now we're just figuring out you know, the last few puzzle pieces to the masterpiece. You know, it, think about Worlds. You know, I think that was almost in a way it was good for us. You know, we went out there. These guys competed hard routines, and so now they understand, you know, the feeling of what Worlds is like and the nerves. We had a young team, if you think about experience. Um, so in a way, you know, you got to go through bad times to feel the good times. And success is not, you know, given its earned. So, you know, you can't, you know, put too much pressure on yourself from this past world. You know, you just got to learn from it and build off of it. And you got to trust each other. And this is where you really figure out your identity as a team. Are you going to let this past world identify us? Or are we going to keep building, keep growing, and get us on the podium? It's incredible. I mean, I can even tell just over the past couple years the evolution of how hard you guys have been training and the strategy component mm -hmm. there. So I'm really encouraged by what I saw from you and, and yeah, all of your teammates you. here. And I can't wait to see the success you're going to have internationally. Yeah, I know. We're, I think we're all excited because, you know, this is a new year. Um, it's new chances for us. Actually, the DTB Cup, Japan sending their A team. So whoever goes out there, I know they're going to be super excited to match up against them. And like I said, I think world is in a way kind of good for us to learn yeah. from. Um, it's it's hard to explain the feeling, but I think now we kind of have that mindset of okay, you know, like we know what we're capable of. Now it's like really time to go out there and grab it. You hope you can get to that DTB Cup. Yeah, you know, I yeah. I hope that I'm selected onto the team. Um, I know. think you served yourself good here. <laughs> Might help yeah, you. Winning yeah. the all around is a good a good plug for yourself. Yeah, no, that that me is always so fun. There's actually a mixed cup too. Um, there's juniors too. Nice. Um, so it's just it's actually a huge event, and you know, competing in Germany is always just so yeah. fun. The crowd there, uh, the energy, all the other countries. So it's a well known competition. Real, real quickly, tell everybody what you've been doing though, because you've been competing in Germany, competing in France. A little bit different path than a lot of the other American guys, but. That experience competing seems like it's paid off here, but tell everybody what, what it's like and what you've been up to. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so after World Championships, I actually stayed in Europe. I flew to Germany in Stuttgart and competed four Bundesliga matches there. Uh, one, was, one of them was like of the finals, which is like NCAA finals. And then I flew to Switzerland, did the U.S. competition. And then I flew to France and did the top 12, which is the French Bundesliga, but it's what it is is these pro teams out there. So every team out there gets to invite two international gymnasts. They pay you for coming out and competing for them, and you know they pay you a base, and then you can earn bonuses off your scores. But for me, I just love this opportunity because it it gets my face in front of international judges. It's a different scene. It's high pressure situation. You know every score counts. So for me, it's just figuring out my groove, and I think I've. I've always loved the NCAA. I think it's so important um, for gymnasts, especially in guys, to you know get to that senior competitive level. And so for me, I'm trying to kind of get that that schedule again. You know, doing these meets constantly, figuring out my groove. So that's what I've been doing. It's it's super fun, and I've been telling all these guys. You know, I encourage you to go out there and yeah. see the world, get paid well for doing a sport you love, making friends, um, getting information from judges. So it's. It's an exciting time. Good for you, man. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, yeah. uh, you know, not ignoring my text. It's like the first time, first <laughs> yeah. time ever. Thanks going. for having me on. Yeah, man. Good luck. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. We'll be watching. Good Hopefully, luck. we'll see you hey, at the DTB Cup and uh, looking forward crossed. to this summer and this fall. Yep, me too. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you. All right. That's going to wrap it up here for the fourth rotation. We're warming up for the fifth. It's coming quick. You better run to the fridge fast. Get back in your couch.
Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic. Seven years now, and to prove basically how much I love being here, how much I trust it, I actually brought my entire family. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're on rotation number five. We're going to go over to the still rings. His name is Alex Diab. His dad was an Iowa State Cyclone NCAA champ on this event, Mark Diab. Alex, one of the best, really one of the best in the world yeah, on we, this event. We talked to Brett McClure about you know the expectations on each event, and he really wants to see a 6-3 on rings and he said Alex Diab is really the only one in this meet that can do that highest start value at Worlds was a 6-7 so Alex is getting close there and he needed to do a 6-3 start value and win rings at this event in order to get that automatic spot unfortunately he's doing a 6-2 we razzed him a little bit about adding a 10th to his difficulty it would take a double double dismount at the end he does a full twisting double layout but certainly working his way towards that. And honestly, with his floor and his vault, those three events, those are events that he potentially could be in the lineup for Team USA on a three-up, three-count situation. So obviously, it wouldn't help him on the other events, but if he can score high enough on those three, and mathematically, they look at it and say, you know what, it's worth putting him on there for those three. He could be a world or an Olympian. What do you think? To, needs to clean up that dismount. I'm, I'm a little... Little pikey bent knees at the end. I think if he can get that double twisting double back in, I think it's going to serve him better. You can see right there. The body's got to be straight. The knees have to be straight. And that big step. That dismount the biggest deduction of the routine. Connor McKeeping it cool on vault. 
Wow. Did step over that line. We saw Connor on floor. Outstanding routine there. He's actually the second place gymnast. Maxim Brezhnev competing his vault. Second place gymnast Connor McCool on floor. Exercise behind Shane Wiskus by about a tenth of a point. So close there, but he would not have had the start value to get that automatic spot on that event. Nice pre-flight on that, Yurchenko. That's your vault, Sam. That is my vault. Not anymore. It's been a while. How much would I have to pay you to get you to do that? <laughs> I mean, if, if written consent that you would pay for my medical bills after. I don't I don't know that there would be medical bills, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodness. Michael Fletcher now from Illinois. Saw him with a good high bar team in the first rotation until, unfortunately, landed the dismount. A guy that was in the hunt. Yeah, you know he's watching that event closely and wants to get back to work in the gym. He's about eight spots back in the point system total, trying to get one of those automatic spots. That's a lot to make up. This is a good event for him, though. Oh, going for the stuck landing. Clearly trying to stick that. Ends up a little bit short. Cameron Bach on P-bars here. Saw him have trouble on Pommel Horse earlier, unfortunately. But this is a great event for him. For him. He can really swing some parallel bars. And right as I say that, he misses his hand on that peach to handstand, unfortunately. Beautiful sequence across the other side of the parallel bar. The Bob's are. Good finish. Unfortunate hand miss on one of his skills is Isaiah Drake on vault. Two and a half twist. Well done. Pumped up about that fault. You know, I keep wanting to give you guys a score update, but really it's not so much an all-around competition. This is an individual event-focused competition. And these guys are bringing the heat on day two. It's been really fun to watch. And if you do want an, uh, an all-around update, the, the interesting part of it is, I think, Shane Wiskus is in the top spot as we take a look at him getting ready for rings. But Josh Carnes, and you heard Yule mention the Penn State guys when he was up here. Josh Carnes competing for Penn State. He's in the second position. Now keep in mind the top five guys other than Shane aren't competing all around right now. So, but still he's ahead of Riley Loose. Landon Blixt in fourth. Cameron Bach moved up to the fifth spot, but Josh Carnes, man, just methodical and machine-like. He's getting ready for floor exercise at the same time as Shane Whisk is getting ready for rings, but I'm impressed with him. Yeah, me too. And, and just the way he carries himself. You know, he takes his training seriously. And I'm looking at him right now. He's doing some visualization on the side of the floor. And you can tell it's a guy that really wants this. Right now, we'll go to Shane Wiskus on rings. Shane had an unfortunate pommel horse rotation in the last event, an event that I know he really wanted to, to show out on. But... And this is a good event for him. He was in second place on rings after the first day of competition. So looking to repeat what he did there, maybe even improve it slightly. Nice sequence. Back up, rise, legs together, plunge, lowers down to the Maltese. I'd like to see him hold that Maltese just a hair longer. And he does one from a swing. Those, that sequence right there, critical for Shane. He's got to get that sequence as good as anybody in the meet to really score on rings. But the swing part of the still rings is an area where Shane really has no weaknesses. Double twist and double back. Nice. 
I just want everybody at home to know that right when I said he has no weaknesses, <laughs> he swung the handstand and then flexes his elbow and Sam looks over at me and raises her eyebrow. And I'm like, seriously, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know... We've it, been it, hanging out way too much this too, weekend. Too much. I knew exactly what he was thinking, and it's always unfortunate for us as commentators when we, we say something, we know it's true, and, and someone has a slight mistake, so does a good job picking it up on that double double dismount. Landon Blix here on P-Bar. Fourth all around today. A couple of Wolverines in fourth and fifth, Blix and Bach. That could be a law firm, Blixton Bach. <laughs> oh, an unfortunate elbow come on, come bend. On, come on. Good fight, but that is still going to be a major deduction. aspects that the judges are looking for on this event? Well, again, stillness in the handstands. You can't move those hands. A form like every other event, but you've got to, it's difficulty. You know, parallel bars, there's so many good guys nationally and internationally on this event. you got to see a lot of the upper arm skills they saw from Kern Phillips, those big underbar skills like the Bob's are, and you just, you have to pack in the difficulty. And now guys are so good, there's no form breaks. There's really no risk in a lot of this routine because they're so good at it. I say no risk. It's easy for me to say, but watch this right. first pass right here. This first pass is called the Lucan, named after Valeri Lucan. It's a triple back. Cameron Nelson, he <laughs> over-rotated it. And he did go out of bounds. He made it so easily. That looks so much fun. Wow. I talked to Valeri about the triple back. I said, do any triple backs lately? And, of course, he hasn't. But I said, you know, there's a guy doing a triple back here in this meet. He said, oh, really? And I go, yeah, but don't worry, Valeri. The springs are way bigger in the floor than they used to be. And he said, yeah, we need to have springs. I go, I know. It was little foam donuts, like rubber donuts under the floor. And I'll tell you what, a whole different experience. But not to take away from Cameron Nelson, that was amazing. Yeah, he's sitting in third place on floor after the first day of competition and he has a huge difficulty score 6-0 and struggled a bit on execution day one 8-0 and this is looking pretty nice I think his execution score assuming his last pass follows the same course I think he can improve that score here today might even earn him a higher place on floor wow he blocked that triple twist out so high almost short of the rotation That's fun, but that's that fun to watch. He can tumble, wow. He can tumble. It could be fun to do a triple back. So much fun. Gosh, that would be fun. The day that, the first day that you have to try it on hard ground, how scared do you think you'd be? Terrified. I'd skip that day of practice. <laughs> Koi Young now on Palma Horse. I talked a lot about Koi Friday during the all-around competition. A young man who I'm excited to see him be 100% healthy in shape and see what he can do. I tell you what, he is a contender for the big meets, meaning the World Championships and the Olympic Games, in my opinion. And the big reason is this event, the pommel horse. He's very good. I feel like that's really the story of this competition, which, you know, to my amazement, has not historically been that way. So exciting to see that these guys are really taking the messaging from the high-performance director and, and Putting it into action, very cool to see from the outside looking in. Koi Young with that pommel horse routine. That was huge for him. Coming into today, he was one spot out of making the team on points. Right ahead of him was Josh Carnes, and we know Josh has been just hitting routine after routine. The difference, though, that routine from Koi Young is a routine that can be in the top three in today's competition. Josh Carnes, steady, but not a lot of those routines that really jump up and finish in the top one, two, or three. But we'll see. The competition not done. Josh Carnes on floor, by the way, a 13.7. That is a score that will get him some points most certainly. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see 
who gets those locked positions. This is Taylor Christopoulos from Nebraska, up next on floor. Looks like he's itching to get things going here. Cameron Nelson for his floor team, a 13.764. Landon Blix at 12.7, Cameron Bach at 13.7. Both of those scores from Carol of ours. That's sweet. Double twisting, double layout. Great body positions in the air. Nice triple Russian, fulfills a requirement. He told us that day one of comp uh, competition at championships last year, he got a little nervy. And you know what guys, I can't unhear that and it's gonna live in my brain forever. I'm gonna start using that phrase. I've been a little nervy before myself. He doesn't look very nervy today. No, he looks looking calm and cool. Taylor Christopoulos competes for Nebraska. Nice. Yes. Well done. Winding down this fifth rotation, Riley Loose. This was moments ago. Coy Young on Palmer Horse, a 13.8. Again, not the score that's going to hang with the Steven Nadarosics or the Ian Skirkies, but out of the all-arounders competing, that is a big score, and that will get him points most certainly. Riley had some trouble on this event on day one, so here late in the competition, I think this is really important for him to be considered in the all-around, to put it together, improve there. Only scored a 12.3 with a 6-7 execution. Doing a good job keeping it going. Good fight. You can see a little piked in his circle. Like to see him extend a little bit more, tighter in the leg. Good fight, stayed on. Riley Luce a 12.85 for that pommel horse routine. One more high bar routine, and then I think that's going to put a wrap on this rotation. Alex Diab started still rings with a 14.798. Good score there. Taylor Christopoulos on floor, 13.85. Kai Yamura will be the final gymnast. He's in the junior group. Region got, 5 guy. Out of Region 5. I don't want to brag, but Region 5, uh, it's great. This is your junior all-around Winter Cup champion, a fellow Region 5 athlete. Like one Big Sam Peshek. Big fan. I was region four, just so you know. Okay, all right. We just had athletes like Paul and Morgan Hom. I don't know. We had Shane uh, Whiskus. Jordan Weber, Bridget Sloan. Chelsea Mammel. <laughs> uh, we digress. I mean, I'm, I think Kai is hoping to digress. They're really icing these guys today. I know. The Making judges are wait. slow. Waiting for Zach Green's score. Again, if you're just joining us, there is a group today on each event that is represented by the seven top juniors from the Elite Team Cup, which was last night. So, the top seven on each event from that competition compete on that said event here with the seniors. So, great opportunity for them to compete with the best in the country. Certainly a place they all hope to be someday and probably will be very soon. Here we go. Beautiful one-arm sequence right there. That's called the Zoli Men. Big Kovacs. The whole gym, all eyes are on say. Kai. 
This is awesome. We're hearing everybody from all the rotations kind of getting into it, cheering for him right now. How cool for this junior athlete. Just the dismount. Double-double. Well done, young man. Outstanding job. He should be proud. That was a lot of gymnastics in that routine. Here's one more look. This is the dismount. Two flips in the laid out position, two twists. A little short on the landing, takes that big step forward, but big sigh of relief. A little clap, he should be proud of that performance. My goodness, what a competition it has been. Five rotations are done. We might have a special guest for you in the booth when we come back. How about that for a tease? Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic. It's a two-day traveling gymnastics event, focusing on skills, drills, and body movement for the balance beam. The goal of Beam Queen Boot Camp is to empower gymnasts to be confident on beam by strengthening their mental and physical techniques. We'd be honored to have you part of this amazing Beam Queen community too. Check out our website for upcoming events and get on our email list so you will always know what we have coming up. See you at our next beam party. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today.
we're on camera. Brett just asked me, how's my hair? <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, Brett thank McClure, you. High performance, high performance director. How many title? How many words are in your title? Three. High per that's it. High performance director. Yes, that thanks is for correct. joining us. What do you think of the meet so far? Oh, this is exciting. We've seen some phenomenal gymnastics. Uh, my gosh, highlight of the day: Curran's parallel bar routine. It was unbelievable. Shane Wiskus just finishing up. We talked about uh, the guys who automatically qualified. Five guys. Shane the only guy to compete today. What do you think of his performance? I thought it was awesome. You know, he played a little safe on the last two events, uh, secured his spot, and uh, I think he wanted to come back and, and do a little bit more today. Ignacio Yockers, and we've talked about Ian Skirky getting that automatic spot. It's not over quite yet. Ignacio Yockers is capable of a big score here, but he's going to have to be perfect. That's right. He's been good all year. Yeah, day one of competition, he sits in fourth place on this event. Huge 6-4 start value and 8-1 execution. He's definitely one of the guys that's in the mix on this event. And that routine was pretty darn near perfect. Wow. I'll tell you what, we, we basically anointed Ian Skirky that spot on Pommel Horse, but I tell you what, we might have been a little bit premature, Brett. I don't know if with the bonus, you know, Ian Skirky out of 15, 9, 7, 2, which means he's probably going to have to go over a 16 to leapfrog Ian Skirky on that event, but I'll tell you what, that's not, that's not impossible. It's going to be interesting. What do you think, Brett? Uh, no, I thought that was an incredible routine, probably as good as he's done it, and I know at NCAA, he scored as high as a 15-5, and that's without bonus. This is Riley Luz on rings. Day one of competition, scoring a 13.953. And Riley again in the hunt for points. He was third in the point total coming into today's competition. Where, yeah, he's where just Riley fit in. He's he is just kind of plugging away right now. He knows that he has to do two days of all around to accumulate um, enough points to stay in the top five there. And so he's just working it, you know, try to do all around both both days, and he's usually pretty consistent. Got some points on rings this event as well as vault and high bar. That was a great routine. He's been really solid this year uh, for the NCAA season on rings. So we're looking over right now, Alex Diab getting looked at on the vault runway. That was an event that he was trying to qualify in the automatic spot. Not sure what is up, but the trainers are visiting with him. Hopefully he's okay as Zach Green gets ready to go for the junior group on the floor exercise. What do you think of this junior group? It's kind of fun for them to get to be out here on the floor with the seniors. Who's Where did that, that idea come from, and, and what's the hope with getting them out here? Yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, Fun fact about Zach Green on floor, actually both of his parents are Cal gymnasts. Kristen Smith was the head coach at Stanford University, and Scott Green, also a Cal alumni, was the assistant coach at Stanford for a little bit of time. Um, and now Zach is here competing at the Winter Cup and floor finals. It's pretty incredible. This is a really fun opportunity for these guys to compete side by side with the seniors. It used to be uh, a few years back that there was a junior session and a senior session. Since the Elite Team Cup has joined Winter Cup, um, we wanted to find a way to work them into the senior Winter Cup aspect of it and have an event final. So that's where we are now. Nice. Good fight so far on a couple of those landings. Go ahead, Sam. Brett, when we talked to you the other day, you kind of told us the, the I want to say, new strategy for Team USA, really increasing those start values and focusing on individual event athletes and studs all around. What events are you most impressed with in today's or this week's competition? Well, it's really hard to ignore not just Curran on parallel bars, but Blake soon on parallel bars as well. That was an unbelievable routine. I think people forget how good it is just because he is side by side with Curran. Um, but it is absolutely phenomenal to have two guys of that caliber on that event is, is really good to see. Uh, we've seen a lot of upgrades on high bar 
Fred Richard on high bar on day one was absolutely phenomenal. And Curran shows up again on that event with three critical elements taken out of the routine, you know, to help with a, with a back stiffness that he's got going on right now. So we hope for him to be fully recovered soon and putting up some very large numbers. And Shane Wiskus had a great showing on high bar today. He missed his layout to Kachev on day one. Um, so it was really important for him to come out here uh, and knock out a set like he's capable of doing, which is what we know and love about Shane. Uh, so that was really good to see. So I'm really happy with those two events in particular. And then, of course, we've got six guys on pommel horse. That's awesome. This is Garrett Broughton from Air Force Academy doing a big high bar routine. Jump back to Curran Phillips for me real quick, because obviously we know he's good on high bar and, and parallel bars. Where is he on the other four events? Is he training the all-around? Is he somebody that can, you know, maybe not win an event, but can he be a, a leadoff on any of those other four events should he get in a, a world ta championship team or Olympic situation? He has a, he, he does vault, so he's a three-event guy, uh, a lot like Alex Diab does three events. Um, the other events, you know, he's trying. He, he's in such a team player, you know, will do anything he possibly can, put together a 4.2 start value on a pommel horse routine. Um, but I don't think, uh, you know, the other three events are going to be a factor, but he's just such a stud on the other three. It's a lot like uh, what they're doing in China. Ian Gunther here on Still Rings. What do you think of Ian Gunther, particularly his parallel bar routine, in particular his dismount on parallel bar routine? Have you <laughs> had a chance to really take time and appreciate that much? Yeah, I, I saw he uh, <laughs> he had some difficulty on the landing on day one. He did. He did. I was very disappointed yeah. in him. Yeah, um, but, but he came back strong today. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is good right here, though, too. I think he forgot to get the memo to turn around and face the camera on this event, though. We need to talk to him. You know, he's been on national team. He's a really clean gymnast. Uh, had a few setbacks, a couple minor injuries. Uh, he's coming back. He's healthy again. So he's... He's going to be one to contend with. He could potentially uh, get on this team. That was a very nice routine. Tom Galimi gives it the fist bump in the background. Nice finish. Nice finish to his day for sure. What's that Stanford Cardinal workout like? Is that a national team inner squad every day or what? I mean, that's a pretty special situation they have. Yeah, they have, I, I think, half the national team there training right now. It's, it's, it's like a national team camp uh, every day. You know, they've said that to me many times times and it's uh, a special atmosphere that is very hard to replicate very hard to create you know it actually happens organically they they've trained each other um, and then someone like Tom Gleamy and the coaching staff are there as support staff like they just really got to get out of the way and let these guys go to work yeah it's a common theme we've been talking about throughout this competition with these guys of Iron sharpens iron, and we're really seeing that with the ASA Inner Gym. Not that they're all teammates, but this Inner Gym meeting Team USA competition on each individual event with parallel bars, pommel horse, and I think that's really we're going to see an increase in scores, especially internationally, when they're competing almost every single day in the gym. There's Kip Simons pulling the board, one of your mentors, coaching wise, 1996 Olympian, pulling the board for Isaiah Drake. Absolutely, he was my first boss. I was the assistant coach at the Air Force Academy when. Uh, uh, he became the head coach. Uh, that was my first first job right out of uh, my competitive career. Nice peach to handstand. Isaiah Drake is on the senior development team, along with Garrett Broughton, who we saw on high bar just recently, who posted a 6.0 difficulty score. Two military guys on the senior development team, which is phenomenal. That's it's awesome. great for their schools. It's great for our national team. And, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to get them out there and get a little international experience. Well done. He's a good kid. Fun to talk to. Good competition for him. High bar. The Wolverines. Rithik Purry now. Just two left to go here on the horizontal bar. A few more to go on floor exercises. We're getting to the end of this sixth and final rotation. Ignacio Yockers, by the way, to give you an update, gets a 15.472. It's not going to be enough 
Ian Skirky. He's a national team member. What do you think? That's amazing. You know, he's been knocking on the door the last couple of years, and, you know, tough company to be in. Alec Yoder, Steven, world champ, Olympian. You know, it's a, it's a tough group to break into, but he earned it. He earned it today. It was an incredible routine. There was Sam's favorite skill on high bar, the flying giant. I want, I want John to teach it to me. That was a very good routine. So what's next for these guys? When is the next time the national team is getting together? So Saturday, the, the, we're going to have three guys fly out to Baku for an individual event World Cup. Um, so we're really excited to get on the World Cup scene. We just saw over the weekend, Coppus was happening right now. Uh, and a lot of good athletes were out there just kind of... Get out there, see what everyone else is doing. And then the following week is the DTB Team Challenge. And we're going to send a junior team and a senior team for the Team Challenge How out many there. each team? Five and five. And then we'll also have, it's an interesting concept, is a mixed team cup. And three uh, mag athletes and three wag athletes uh, will compete together on the final session on Sunday and uh, do a mixed team cup. So uh, we're looking to really focus on the development guys for the mixed group. You know, they're only going to get to do one, two, maybe three events. Um, but we're really looking at putting together a couple solid teams for the juniors uh, and the seniors at DTB. Nice. Uh, and then we have Junior Worlds right around the corner in Turkey. So it'll be two different teams that we send, one to Germany and one to Turkey. Um, and that's going to be awesome. You know, Junior Worlds uh, is, it is an exciting event. I'm really glad the FIG has added it uh, to the calendar uh, because, you know, it's really hard to find out what other countries are doing at the junior level. And to have everybody on the same floor competing against each other is just so much fun and inspirational. And, awesome. you know, hopefully will help grow the sport. And when will you be naming those teams? Yeah, and have you named anybody yet? No, we have and not. Can we do it right now on air? Sure, yeah. Let's go ahead and go for it. Let's, uh, I see you've got all the numbers out here on the table. You know, I think... All the data you could actually need at your fingertips right here for you, Brett. Yeah. Uh, immediately following this meet, we'll be able to recognize the points, national team guys, obviously the all-arounders from day one, Brody Malone, Ernest Bott, being the high bar world champion. That's right, I said it. Yeah, that's feels a, that good to say. There. That was impressive. Garrett Schooley finishing up floor exercise. Did you see his vault? Garrett's? Triple full. It was awesome. Oh, wow. wow. From a yeah. junior. And from impressive. a junior. Evan Hymanson here, the last guy to go on horizontal bar. Yeah, so we'll also take a look at event winners if they meet the uh, um, difficulty score criteria to lock in a national team spot. So let's, let's just stop there for a second. So you had five make it. From the all-around, that's five spots. Yep. You've got five points totals to, yep. to go. Let's assume Curran Phillips is one of those. That means that means uh, Ian Skirky is going to be the only individual event guy. That gets you to 11 of the 15. Brody Malone is already on the team. That's 12. That means you got three spots left to fill, but you also have a petition from Colt. Colt Walker and Donnell Wittenberg, who are just members of the world team, which I'm sure is going to give a lot of thought to those guys, which leaves you one spot. I mean, is it going to be a long night? It, it could be, yeah. And we've got a few more uh, petitions nice. to consider. By the way. Excellent dismount. That's how you want to finish the meet with a stick. Yeah. Here's Cooper Kim finishing up his meet on floor. So who uh, can you tell us who the other petitions are, or is that the top secret information? No. Um, Paul Judah. Mm -hmm. You know, he announced um, recently that he had an injury in, in January that he's coming back from, so he wasn't able to recover in time. And then Taylor Burkhardt is not here competing, so uh, he also put in a petition. So, yeah, there's a lot to consider between guys that are out here competing and those that were unable to, to get here and be part of this process. So uh, hopefully it doesn't take all night, but um, we'll be thorough, that's for sure. How many times do you sit in that meeting and go, can we just add a couple spots? <laughs> Every time. Every, Every time. single time. Yeah. But, you I think know, that's it's a good problem yeah, to yeah. have when you're that deep on, on this many events. I don't think historically that's been the case for Team USA. To, so to have all these guys working so hard, I mean, how lucky are you? Yeah, no, it's a good problem to have for sure. Um, we're not as deep as Japan. You know, we're, we're making progress. 
Japan, they can score 85s through the top 10 wow. athletes in the all-around, right? And, and we've got a few guys that can kind of smell that. <laughs> uh, and we're getting a lot more guys that can put together two or three events at that caliber. Um, but we're not as deep as Japan, where they've got so many all-arounders that are excellent. So still some work to do. This is Michael Fletcher from moments ago here earlier in this rotation. Jim Sada, Illinois. So what are you looking for for that Baku meet? Is that you're looking for good individual event guys only for that? Yeah, the, the individual event World Cups are a phenomenal experience for those guys that are, you know, specialists or can do two or three events um, to get out there. It's a really, really long meet if you're an all-arounder. Mm -hmm. You could be there eight to nine hours. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's, it's not designed to really benefit the all-around gymnast. Um, but, again, there are opportunities that say an all-around gymnast uh, didn't fit into a team. You know, I mm -hmm. think it'd be good for them to get out there and at least focus on two or three events, mm -hmm. even if they are an all-around gymnast. So um, there's a ton of com competition at the World Cups, and, and that's the biggest benefit is going to see you know, who the best is from each country. Max Odin will finish up this competition. I mean, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but if I'm thinking individual event, World Cup, I'm thinking Ian Skirky. He's going to be in the mix with uh, uh, Curran Phillips on parallel bars. Could we potentially see guys like that heading over to Baku? Absolutely. Anything's possible, and it definitely... Um when you we'll say be anything, could you consider John Roethlisberger for a position <laughs> spot? Well, you said anything. Uh, Leia Skywalker. Leia, thank you yes. very much. Get yeah. the name right. Max Oden, he's just recently made the national team at the U.S. Championships and really clean gymnast. Small mistake there, just uh, had to do a punch front tuck instead of, I believe he was trying to lay out. Nice double full finish with a stick. That'll do it. It's going to do it for the sixth and final rotation. Brett, great to have you up here, man. We got all those inside scoops, so we know who's going to Baku. Um, we got that locked. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you got a lot of work to do tonight. You got to pick some national team, but, uh, but exciting. And, and just real quick, we talked a lot about start values from the Olympics to the last World Championships. You had told us you've improved three points. From last fall to now, do you feel like you're still trending in that right in that direction? Absolutely. Uh, the majority of the deficit was made up on vault, right? We had Asher Hong, Donnell Wittenberg doing 6-0 vaults, two 6-0 vaults, Colt Walker with a 5-6. That's actually the highest difficulty in the world at this point in time from the last World Championships. Unfortunately, we didn't quite get to do that in three up, three count, mm -hmm. um, but the pieces are there and we're working toward it. So that was a huge chunk of it. But now we've got to make up some ground on parallel bars and high bar, which what we saw this weekend is promising, yeah. right? So we can add a point and a half just on Curran's parallel bar routine, which is absolutely incredible. And now you're in striking distance, yeah. right? If you can get within a couple points in difficulty, it's almost as close as you're going to get to a level playing field where, you know, anything can happen. You put together a solid meet where you're hitting 100%. You know, you could be on the podium again, which is where we yeah. want to be. We've been talking a lot about start values, and obviously these guys have increased that. We're still looking for more, but what did you think about their execution this weekend? It's good. It's it's getting better. Um, obviously, with more risk, uh, you're bound to make more mistakes, and that's kind of that phase that we're in right now. That was going through World Championships. You have to have the courage to go for it and make those mistakes, accept them, and then build up the consistency, clean up the routines, and I feel like we're starting to do that.
that, and we still have time to get it done to where we're hitting 100%. We're really just not questioning whether or not you're going to hit a routine. It's how good you're going to hit that routine and if you're going to stick to dismount. You know, that's the mentality you want to have heading into Paris. And so obviously some, still some work to get to get done, but uh, we're on the right track, you know, and these guys are working really hard and they're extremely motivated. Well, nice work. Thanks for joining us. You can you can have an M M&M and M if you want. Oh, you leave. That's been keeping us going. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's you. Been a good weekend. Appreciate but, that, uh, Brett. Thanks for joining us. That's going to wrap up the six rotation. We're going to wrap up the final standings when we come back here to Louisville. Exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health. With a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. years now and to prove basically how much I love being here, how much I trust it, I actually brought my entire family. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2023 U.S. Classic, August 4th and 5th at Now Arena in Hoffman Estates. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the USA Gymnastics National Championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit usagymclassic.com for more information. Don't miss any of the gymnastics excitement at the 2023 U.S. Classic. Welcome back to Freedom Hall here in Louisville, Kentucky. That is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. The 2023 Winter Cup is in the books. And Sam, going through the events real quick. Cameron Nelson from Ohio State, he gets the win on the Palma Horse. We talked a lot about Ian Skirky. He held off some of the best. Ignacio Yacher, Steven Nedarosik, he gets the win there. And the automatic berth onto the national team. And I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but... Might be in Baku in a week, so hopefully he, uh, hopefully Illinois can do without him for a week of uh, collegiate season because they might tap him for that event. Over to rings, Alex Diab, he gets the win there. One-tenth short of that start value, Sam. If he had one-tenth higher in start value, did the tuck double-double and still pulled out the win, he would have had the automatic spot. Now he's got to hope for point total to get in there. Vault. Koi Young from Stanford gets the win there. Cameron Nelson, by the way, from Ohio State gets number two. And actually, Cameron Nelson's the only one in the rankings that I see that did two vaults, if I'm reading that correctly. Peril of ours, we all know about Curran Phillips. He will be on the national team, but Brett mentioned to us that he might make it on point total, not just an individual event, which would open up point total or individual event for someone else, but no one's there. 
So yeah, lots of creative ways of yeah. making the national team. You know, it's tough for us to keep track. I, I'm sure these guys competing um, have every detail memorized because they they want this. But uh, overall, I'm just really encouraged by what we're seeing today. John, I know you feel the same way. Yeah. Obviously, men's gymnastics is uh, near and dear to your heart. So what do you think about this overall competition? I think it, I think it was great for a Winter Cup, and I say that because Winter Cup is never. They're never at their best. They're going to be better at U.S. championships, and they'll be better at the world championships. So for them to be where they're at right now, I think they've been put on notice. And I think yep. the last world championships was a heartbreaker for them. Those guys are fired up. I think Fred Richard, who didn't wasn't eligible to be on that world team, he is fired up. And, you know, you look at this team, and, and not to, again, put the cart before the horse and pick guys for teams that a lot can change. But if I'm just spitballing names, you know, Brody Malone is the man. Stay healthy, keep doing what you've been doing, and he's probably in there. You look at an Asher Hong, who is just machine-like and jumps up big time on individual events as well as being good in the all-around. Fred Richard, you know, got to refine himself a little bit, but he's got that difficulty and he's got that swagger on the big stage. You got those three guys. You look at what Yule did today, um, Shane Wiskus, the other guys in the top five from this competition, and then you look at guys like... Brett mentioned it, a current Phillips who does three events but jumps up there big time. It's going to be hard to piece together this team, which I think is a good thing. Harder than it's been, you know, maybe in some recent times. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think you can both hear from our voices watching these routines. We're fired up. The future is bright for the men here at the Team USA competition. It's early in the elite season, but a lot more international assignments to come and championships in the future and worlds. So these guys have a lot to look forward to. I know they're going to get back in the gym, work on those details. But for right now, it was a phenomenal competition, not just this one, but all five that we covered. Five and four six, and three days. There's seven total this weekend. Oh lots my of goodness. gymnastics. We loved it and we just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in, supporting us, supporting these athletes and really supporting Team USA as we're gunning for more medals at World Championships at the future Olympic Games. So thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you next Sam, time. Sam, it's been a pleasure. Great working with you. Hopefully we'll get to do this again so long from the 2023 Winter Cup. But don't go away because right now they are going to show you the award ceremony for these individual event finals. Give these athletes their due. But for Sam and I, so long from Louisville, Kentucky and the 2023 Winter Cup. Region 4, Solon Chioti. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 5, Cooper Kim. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Floor Champion, winning the gold medal from Region 8, Garrett Schooley. Here they are, your floor medalist among junior men at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. And now, the awards for floor exercise, senior men. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Illinois, Connor McCool. In second place, winning the silver medal from Evo, Shane Wiskus. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Final senior floor champion, winning the gold medal for Ohio State University, Cameron Nelson.
Here they are, the senior men's floor medalists for the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. And now the 2023 Winter Cup Pommel Horse Awards for Junior Men. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Region 9, Gavin Zaborowski. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 5, Sasha Bogonosio. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Pommel Horse Champion. Winning the gold medal from Region 8, Garrett Schooley. There they are, your Pommel Horse medalists among junior men at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. And now the awards for senior men on pommel horse in the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Evo Gymnastics, Steven Nederosic. In second place, winning the silver medal from University of Oklahoma, Ignacio Yockers. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Pommel Horse Champion, winning the gold medal from University of Illinois, Ian Skirky. There they are, your Pommel Horse medalists among senior men at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. And now the awards on rings for the 2023 Winter Cup Junior Division. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Region 7, Adam Lacomi. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 3, Caden Clinton. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Rings Champion, winning the gold medal from Region 9, Ty Jordan. There they are, your junior medalists on rings at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals.
And now the rings awards for the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Division. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Evo Gymnastics, Shane Oeskes. In second place, winning the silver medal from Stanford University, Riley Luce. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Rings Champion, winning the gold medal from Evo Gymnastics, Alex Diaz. There they are, your 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Men's Rings Medalists. And now the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Men's Awards on vault. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Region 4, Gage Kyle. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 3, Chase Mundy. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Vault Champion, winning the gold medal from Region 8, Garrett Schooley. There they are, your 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Men's Vault Medalists. And now the award ceremony for Senior Men's Vault at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. The one athlete that completed both vaults picking up first place. The 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Vault Champion earning the gold medal for Ohio State University, Cameron Nelson. There he is, your 2023 Winter Cup Final Senior Vault Champion. And now the Parallel Bars Awards for the 2023 Men's Winter Cup Finals, Juniors Division. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Region 4, Gage Kyle. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 1, Zach Green. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior Parallel Bars Champion, winning the gold medal from Region 3, Caden Clinton. There they are, your Junior Parallel Bars medalists at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals.
And now the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Parallel Bars Awards for Senior Men. Tied for third place at earning bronze medals from Evo Gymnastics, Shane Wiskus. And from Penn State University, Joshua Carnes. In second place, winning the silver medal for Stanford University, Blake Soon. Finishing in first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior Men's Parallel Bars Champion, winning the gold medal from Stanford University, Curran Phillips. There they are, your Parallel Bars medalists of the 2023 Winter Cup Finals for Senior Men. And now the awards for high bar for the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Juniors Division. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Region 9, Gavin Zaborowski. In second place, winning the silver medal from Region 3, Caden Clinton. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Junior High Bar Champion, winning the gold medal from Region 5, Kai Uemura. Here they are, your Junior High Bar medalists of the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. And now the high bar awards for senior men at the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. In third place, winning the bronze medal from Stanford University, Ian Gunther. In second place, winning the silver medal from University of Michigan, Landon Blix. In first place, the 2023 Winter Cup Finals Senior High Bar Champion, winning the gold medal from Stanford University, Curran Phillips. Here they are, your senior men's high bar medalists of the 2023 Winter Cup Finals. One more presentation to go, gymnastics fans. And it's a big one.
At this time, we would like to recognize your 2023 men's national team members named during the all-around competition on day one of the Senior Men's Winter Cup. Yule Moldauer. Brad Richard. Asher Hahn. Ian Lasik Ellis. And Shane Whiskers. Now joining these gentlemen after tonight's competition are Joshua Carnes. Curran Phillips. Riley Luce. Cameron Nelson. Taylor Christopoulos. And Ian Skirky. These athletes will join 2022 World Championships gold medalist Brody Malone in representing Team USA this year in both national and international competition. And three additional members will be named to the team after the competition. Let's hear it for your 2023 USA Gymnastics Men's National Team. One more time, let's hear it for your Team USA. Great thanks to all of the athletes who competed here at the 2023 Winter Cup in Louisville, Kentucky, and congratulations to all the medalists. Gymnastics fans, great thanks for joining us and bringing the noise to Freedom Hall today and for your support of USA Gymnastics. We hope to see you at another USA Gymnastics event soon. Please have a safe trip home.